This week is a big week at Gulfstream Park. On Saturday, we are part of the Sunshine Millions Stakes Races program. That matches the Florida breads against the California breads. It's a series of six stakes races, three in Santa Anita, three at Gulfstream, as both states try to compete to see who produces the best champion race horses. I look forward to going out there on Saturday. I got reservations for the indoor simulcast center for both myself and my good friend Dan Reynolds, who he and his wife are visiting from Georgia. And with Kim, the four of us are going to spend the day at Gulfstream Park. So we're looking forward to a big Saturday. But now, let's take a look at the selections for Wednesday, January the 26th. My first selection is in the second race, where my selection is the morning line favorite, Arch Rival at 5-2. This is a maiden claimer going 5.5 furlongs on the main track. Arch Rival is trained by Wesley Ward, who scores with 38% of the time when Jeffrey Sanchez rides his horses, with an amazing ROI of $3.50 for every $2 bet. Arch Rival is a first-time starter, and Ward wins with 17% of those. The fact that he is the 5-2 to two morning line tells you a little bit about the quality of the field. It's not going to have to be a lot to beat this field unless one of the other first-time starters is really special. I don't see that happening. My selection is number two, arch rival in the second. In the third race, I see this race as coming off the turf. It's supposed to start raining tonight, which is Tuesday, and it's supposed to rain heavily tomorrow, Wednesday. If that's the case, I look for all the races to come off the turf, and instead of being a two-turn turf affair, this should be run at a one-turn mile on the main track. It's a claiming event, and my selection is number seven, Bracket Buster, who is four to one on the morning line. Uh, he improved by leaps and bounds when he stretched out to a route of ground from a sprint. Interestingly, that route of ground was a one-turn mile at Churchill Downs, and he dropped in for an 80,000 tag. Uh, he sat mid-pack that day, stalked the leaders, and then drew clear through the lane. That was in mid-November. He comes off a layoff for Ken McPeak, and I project him to have a similar stalking trip today. Uh, McPeak wins 22% of the time when he's got Julian Leperu in the saddle, who's riding today. And leperu has been riding very well, especially for this barn. He won a big stakes race on Saturday for McPeak with Kathmandu. Uh, the only knock is that this is... Bracket Buster's first try against winners. Uh, I think that that's a wash, <laughs> pardon the pun, but because the race is off the turf, so he's not facing winners who have proven themselves on the dirt. So my selection in the third race, off the turf at a one-turn mile, is number seven, Bracket Buster. In the fourth race, it's a maiden claimer. This one is scheduled to go on the main track at a one-turn mile. I like number six, Osamo. He's three to one on the morning line, and I will double the bet on Osamo. He is the lone maiden special weight dropper in the field. He goes for the connections of Bill Mott and Kent DeSormo. And I think we might get at least three to one, a fair price today, because Bill Mott is known largely for his turf runners and for his quality turf runners. He's not really known for maiden claimers, maybe sometimes maiden special weights, uh, but he's not very good with maiden first-time starters. But today, uh, this horse, Osimo, is dropping in for a tag. It's interesting that statistics actually show that Mott is 22% with maiden claiming runners, and he wins at a $2.09 ROI, which means it's profitable to bet those kind. So I will take number six, Osimo, in the fourth race at 3 to 1, and I'll double the investment. In the fifth race, I see this race coming off the turf as well. It's a turf sprint, so I project it to be five furlongs on the main track. Uh, it's an allowance optional claimers. I like number nine, Gangster on the Run, and I will triple the bet. Uh, he should be the favorite 2-1. to one. In fact, he should be the short price favorite. Gangster on the run is listed to run main track only, so the fact that he gets in on the main track, uh, he's going to be facing turf runners, and I think that gives him an advantage. On top of that, he was very impressive in New York, and he went off at 8-5 to five in his three-year-old debut here at Gulfstream. What's significant about that is that debut was in the spectacular bid stakes. So coming off a blistering pace-setting front-running victory in New York and coming off the layoff, he was the 8-5 to five favorite in stakes action. Uh, he set a very wicked pace, 44 and change for the half. And though he faded through the stretch, he was only beaten two lengths. So I think the drop down that allows optional claimers, I think that suits him. I think he walks with this race. Uh, Wesley Ward is the trainer. He has a 32% winning percentage with horses like this. 
second time off the shelf, and he wins at a $2.83 ROI for every $2 bet. 22% uh, of the time, uh, he wins when he adds blinkers, and Gangster on the Run is getting blinkers today. I think this all adds up to a big-time win for Gangster on the Run, hoping to get four to five today. That's in the fifth race. In the eighth race, scheduled to go two turns on the turf. Again, I projected to be at a one-turn mile off the turf on the main track. It's an allowance, and I will go with main track only, number 13, Christmas for Liam, who is listed at 5-2. to two. Again, this is main track only horse, so he gets what he wanted. He'll be running against turf runners, which gives him an advantage. Uh, it's also interesting that he's trained by Todd Pletcher coming off the shelf. That's a big-time angle. Uh, he ran huge when he ran at a, yes, one-turn mile at Belmont. He debuted here last year at seven furlongs, and he was a good third in spite of trouble at the start. Uh, it was a very courageous effort for a first-time starter to run third after having that kind of trouble. Uh, interestingly, he was ridden that day by Joe Bravo, who's back on board today. He ran a 93 buyer in his maiden breaker, and he was the favorite against a solid field of winners when he stretched out to eight and a half furlongs, which is also one turn at Belmont. He finished third that day in spite of running wide. He's been working strongly up at Palm Meadows. I see him as going off probably odds on today. Christmas for Liam, number 13 in the eighth race. I will bet him to win. And my final selection today is in the ninth race where I like number 13, Carietta. Again, a main track only as this race also scheduled to go two turns on the turf, and I see it being run at a one-turn mile on the main track, three to one on the morning line. It's a lightly raced filly for trainer Nick Zito. Um, he has tried one-turn miles with this filly at Belmont and this winter here at Gulfstream. In spite of the morning line, I think that we're going to get a fair price as her form is colored. If you go two back to her Belmont start, she's beaten over 13 lengths. If handicappers look at her beaten distance, they may dismiss her. But if you look carefully, you'll see that the winner was clear by 12 that day. So the runner-up came back to score. Carietta was fourth that day. She was beaten just about a length for all the money in that race. Then if you go back to October, from that, from that October race until January 7th, where she debuted here this winter, she again went a one-turn mile in Maiden Special Weight Company, and again she's well beaten, losing by over 15 lengths. Uh, her form is really colored because that day she was sixth. However, again, although the winner only won by a little more than one length, the runner-up was clear of the show horse by over 10 lengths. So, in spite of being 6 by 15, she only missed the show money by about 3 lengths. I think the drop today from Maiden Special Weight to Maiden Claiming, one-turn mile experience, the fact that she's entered main track only, I think all these things point her out as the likely winner. So that's in the ninth race, number 13, Carietta at 3-1. to We'll take a look at how we did today, and we'll take a look at selections for Thursday. We're going to take Friday off from handicapping, and we'll handicap on Saturday for the Sunshine Millions. And then Sunday is the Grade 3 Holy Bowl, the first of the Florida Derby preps, eventually leading to the Kentucky Derby.